So let's discuss another important subject among older adults. Doesn't affect every older adult, but as patients age, um, it certainly becomes more and more prevalent, and that's cognitive decline. So we'll begin with a case. We have a 75-year-old woman. She has a new diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. Testing indicates that she has mild dementia and mild loss of function overall. So what is the first-line treatment for her Alzheimer's disease? Is it ginkgo, memantine, behavioral treatment only, or is it an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor? The answer is acetylcholinesterase inhibitor, and we'll talk about uh, drugs approved for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. Epidemiology of cognitive decline, um, it, as I mentioned, it is common. Uh, the lifetime risk among individuals who live over 65 years is up to 20%. The majority of those cases are due to Alzheimer's disease. However, uh, the U United States Preventive Services Task Force recommends screening uh, for cognitive decline only when there's clinical suspicion of decline. And remember that many times it won't be the patient who tells you about cognitive decline. It's going to be someone who knows them well. It's going to be um, a family member, son, daughter, spouse. Um, it's going to be somebody, they, a, a good friend or somebody they know from church because there's still a lot of stigma. And you can imagine um, being diagnosed with uh, cognitive, cognitive decline is a very scary proposition. So there's a lot of denial among patients and they'll stick to their routines and ignore the fact that they're, they're getting more confused, have more trouble with memory um, rather than facing um, this you know, very severe diagnosis. And, and you know, really, it, it, I feel a lot of empathy. I, I, who can blame them for, for feeling that way faced with such a terrible disease? So in, when there is a suspicion for cognitive decline, when I get that story, you know, I'm losing my, I feel like I'm forgetting a lot of things lately. And this is something I hear from 35-year-olds on a regular basis, uh, much less 75-year-olds. Um, you can think about doing uh, different tests for cognition w within the office. The mini mental status examination is probably the most widely used, um, although it is proprietary. It is, it is something that's still under copyright as an exam. It's fairly lengthy and it's also dependent upon patient's language and educational level. So it, it, I'm not saying it doesn't have a role. It actually absolutely has a role because it's the coin of the realm. Their score on the MMSC means something and it's easily understood by different providers. But I do also like uh, a quick screening tool like the Minicog, especially for those 35-year-olds. It's a simple test involving first a three-item recall, and if that's passed, the chance of any serious uh, dementia is very, very low. If, it, if the uh, patient can only recall one or two items, they're given a clock draw, clock draw test, and if that's normal, um, their, their risk of uh, dementia is very, very low. It has an 89% 89 89 specificity for uh, at least moderate dementia overall, and, and it's not dependent on patients' uh, language and educational level. So therefore, it can be a really useful test in the clinical setting as a screener. If it's positive, that has to be followed up with, with more testing. Some uh, particular causes of dementia and, uh, and their symptomatology are worth noting. Um, it's not something I see a lot in clinical practice, but very well could come up on your exam. Patients with that wide-based gait and urinary incontinence, think about normal, and as well as uh, evidence of dementia, normal pressure hydrocephalus. Patients with ascending paresthesias, feeling weakness, akathisia, and weight loss, vitamin B12 deficiency. And then more clinically speaking, always be, th be thinking about medications and side effects, particularly as individuals get older, and particularly with anticholinergic drugs or other sedating drugs are going to have a significant effect on cognition as well. So when you find a case of dementia, the workup should include a CBC, a comprehensive metabolic panel, a TSH, B12 and folate levels, and in my opinion, every patient with dementia deserves at least one good neuroimaging study, preferably an MRI because it's going to give more details. Assessment for amyloid status with either CSF testing or amyloid P at imaging has become a prerequisite for treatment with amyloid targeted therapies in clinically appropriate individuals. Unfortunately, I see patients who get multiple studies uh, because there's no coordination of care and that, that's a waste of resources. Uh, but I think it is important to get one study just to make sure that there's no gross lesion within the brain and something that will probably confirm the fact that there's this generalized atrophy consistent with uh, dementia such as Alzheimer's.
So first line treatment for Alzheimer's, as I mentioned, it are acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. Uh, they can be uh, used in mild disease, which is when it should be caught. There's three agents available. They're generally similar in efficacy. One comes in the form of a patch, and that may be associated with better tolerability. Overall, you can expect mild improvements in both cognition and function. They're statistically relevant. Does it really matter in terms of um, something clinically that patients can appreciate? Um, generally, my opinion and an overall consensus is no. These drugs tend to hold the line and prevent, they, they promote a slower decline in cognitive uh, ability and function, um, but uh, they don't cause a significant improvement either for the majority of patients. Nothing that they'll notice. If there's no improvement, if the patient's continuing to decline six to eight weeks later, the medicine can be discontinued, and there is a, a significant uh, association with nausea and vomiting and weight loss, and tolerability of these drugs um, is problematic. But it's what we have for, um, for mild Alzheimer's disease. Because there is another class of drugs, the MNDA receptor antagonists, um, and memantine specifically, but it's indicated for a more moderate to severe Alzheimer's disease, not mild disease. And again, modest improvements overall in cognition, in function, and in uh, levels of agitation, not something that, that you could really say, certainly not a cure, uh, maybe something not even that the patient nor the family can, uh, can particularly notice, but that may just be slowing the decline of the disease. But one thing is it's better tolerated at least uh, than the acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. So we know that as well. Monoclonal antibodies directed against beta amyloid have been approved for individuals with Alzheimer's disease with mild cognitive impairment and documented amyloid pathology. These include aducanumab and lecanemab. These medications reduce beta amyloid plaques in the brain and have been demonstrated to slow rates of cognitive decline. As noted earlier, before starting these agents, amyloid PET or CSF testing is needed. Additionally, MRI monitoring is required to evaluate for amyloid-related imaging abnormalities such as edema, hemosiderin deposition, and microhemorrhages. A very difficult um, disease to treat and takes a lot of time and care on your part uh, with careful listening. And uh, this is another case where uh, having a team involved uh, can be particularly helpful just to take care of all the aspects of the patient's life uh, from the physical uh, to the emotional 